Hi there, this is a quick introduction to the Maxquan Taito cell sorter. On the Taito, the sort happens in this uh, cartridge. And so that's what you'll need to bring uh, to our facility. If you need information on how to get that cartridge prep, uh, check on our website, all the information is gonna be there. Uh, you will need a priming fixture to prime your cartridge. This is also available in the CAT facility. So before you experiment, just drop by, pick it up and bring it to your lab. Just don't forget to bring it back because other people will need it, obviously. So let's get started. So getting the title started is not very complicated. You simply start the software. So here we're gonna use the admin account. There's no password, simply click login. And the machine is up, so we're good to go. What I typically do is start setting up my experiment over here. So I uh, decide on the type of cartridge I'm gonna be using. Right now we're using a regular cartridge. The project name will be the name of the folder where the data is gonna be uh, stored. And then I have a sample ID. So today I'm running a bunch of PBMCs. They actually very cells. So under processing volume, we're telling the software how much volume we loaded on the cartridge. Uh, I loaded two mLs, but I'm gonna keep this value to 10 mLs, which is the maximum volume I can put in a cartridge. Uh, and whenever the instrument runs out of those two mLs, it will stop the sort anyway, so we're good. We're gonna use the annotation panel to relabel the axis. And we're pretty much good to go. I'm gonna to go to the channel next. Now I'm ready to load the cartridge. So essentially, I'm just gonna push the panel here and load the cartridge. Keep in mind the owl should be facing you. You could either scan the cartridge or just load it in and click OK over here. Now I'm gonna make my graphs to look at the data. So I can click on this guy over here. I think I need four graphs should be plenty. Choosing the axis, I'm going to start with uh, my CD3 against side scatter, and then CD3, CD8, CD4, CD8, sorry. I'm not going to worry too much about forward and side scatter here. And then I'll have the back scatter data for all three lasers. So that is the blue, violet, and red laser. And that will basically allow me to calculate the speed of the cells as they go through the cartridge. I got everything I need to set up my sort, my gates, and uh, voltages. So now I'm simply going to press the play button. So as I load the cartridge, we see on the secondary screen uh, a, a camera that basically shoots directly at the uh, chip underneath the cartridge and basically tries to align the uh, camera with the cartridge itself. So basically, uh, there's a pattern that the camera will try to find. And when it does, like that's the case now. Uh, the cartridge is in alignment in front of the laser beam, the sample starts flowing, and now we see the data showing up on the screen. So the data started showing up on our graph, and so what I typically do is set the voltage for my backscatter detectors for all three lasers. Uh, essentially what we're trying to do is get them as high as possible uh, on, the, uh, on the axis without saturating the detector. And all of them should have about the same intensity. So uh, I have the same two graphs over here as I have under my uh, threshold. So uh, I'm simply going to increase the backscatter red voltage. Whenever I do that, I have a clear button that allow me to refresh. Is that a bit too high, but we're getting there. And Once I'm happy with the values I get, then I can set my threshold to essentially anything that's not part of the cluster of cells I'm interested in. So that's how we're gonna make data look a little bit better. Just for fun, I'm gonna increase my 
blue side scatter. That looks really good. Now we can go ahead and set the voltage for the rest of these detectors. So we have APC first and my side scatter as well. Oops. Let's have a good separation. We'll set the gate. Now we can deal with the other two detectors. And typically I'll try to get the signal pretty bright. So somewhere around exposing two or something like that. And let's say we want to sort our CD4 positive cells. Now I can go back to experiment and the sort gate would tell the software to uh, sort my P2 region. At this point we're good to go. So we're gonna click the sort button. And right away, we can see over here, uh, the statistics for the sort start populating this table. Uh, I have a graph that tells me how things are going. Um, and so the efficiency of sorting is really high. There's very few aborts. This sample, to be fair, is uh, very cells. There's very few cells and about two ml of sample. So uh, I'm expecting everything to look really, really uh, good here. One graph that I like to use is this axis over here, HDR, DVT, against the time of flight. And this is a sanity saving graph. So essentially, we're, ascend we're, we're measuring the time of flight of the cell uh, between two lasers in the cartridge. It should be around 40 um, microsecond. We see a disturbance over here in the speed. And that is essentially caused by the movement of the valve whenever we sort uh, cells. And so uh, this is actually a, an indication that your cartridge is working properly. If you have a flat line over here, that will essentially mean that uh, the, the, the valve is stuck on your cartridge. Uh, there's a couple of things you can do to try to fix it. Um, if that won't work, then you'll need to switch to a new cartridge. So at this point, while the instrument is sorting, you don't really need to stick around. You can move back to your lab and uh, do something else. The instrument uh, will run the whole the full sort. When it's done, uh, the sample will remain in the cartridge at four degrees. Um, the type of things we would expect to go wrong is if your sample uh, has a lot of debris, a lot of noise in it, uh, it may clog the, the filter uh, that is inside the um, input chamber. When that happens, the sample will simply get stuck there, will not flow anymore through the cartridge. Uh, and at that point, uh, the only real way to fix it is to replace the cartridge. So simply take your sample out of that specific cartridge, put it in a new one, and, and continue to sort that way, which is why it's really important that uh, you clean up your sample as much as possible before uh, you run uh, this experiment. This is about it, guys. So if you have any questions, let us know. But the title really is a quite friendly platform uh, for self-sorting. So there you go. Talk to you later.